What's happening everybody? Trey here, joined as always by my dad Sean, and today reactions to the classics. We have another Neil Young review coming your way. This time it comes a time from 1978, and this comes courtesy of a suggestion from our longtime supporter, and I'd say biggest Neil Young fan oh, yeah. here at RTPC. Our guy Carl, man, shout out Carl. We've Thanks, been uh, Carl. Uh, trekking through a lot of 2020, just going chronologically through Neil's 70s work. And, uh, you know, as we're nearing the end here, it's, uh, you know, I say this in every Neil review, but man, uh, Neil's really been a, a, a gem of a discovery. Oh, he has. Uh, having not known any of his work before starting the channel. And, uh, you know, now he, he, he might be approaching my top 10 uh, of all time, man, because he's just got such a I agree. awesome work. But uh, before we get into the quick facts, um, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up as well as hit that big red subscribe button if you like what you see here and uh, they can also connect with us in a couple other ways yeah you can check us out on our Facebook group fantastic stuff there discord and also if you'd like to support us in any way maybe you want us to do an album like we're doing here for Carl mm -hmm. or a song reaction or a top 10 or any of those things check out our patreon link below they allow us to put in literally trade right. between the two of us hundreds of hours a month on this channel. Also check out our Twitch link below. We do live streams every Friday night, every Wednesday afternoon, whenever else we feel like <laughs> jumping on there. That's that's all, all we got to say here. Let's get into the quick facts. Man. Well, it's his ninth studio album released in October of 1978. It was supposed to be a solo album, but when he mm -hmm. took it to Reprise Records, the executives asked him if he would consider adding rhythm tracks to what he had already done. Young agreed, and the end product was Comes a Time. Two songs, Look Out For My Love and Lot Of Love, were backed by Crazy Horse. Much of the album features harmony vocals from Nicolette Larson. She also shares lead vocals with Young on Motorcycle Mama. And for many years, it was rumored that Young had personally purchased some 200,000 vinyl copies of this album because he was unhappy with the album's sound, owing to damage that occurred to the master tape during shit to the mixing facility. Mm. This version is actually something that he remixed That's right. himself. But Trey, what did he say about those 200,000 records? Well, it's a very interesting story. He ended up using a lot of them as shingles for his roof, man. So I can only imagine, one... For his barn roof, of all things, yeah. too, which really tells you what well, he thought of it. I mean, how, how much space would 200,000 LPs take up, man? That's, that's the and first how, thing. And <laughs> how much coin do you have? I mean, I know Neil was making yeah, a lot of money, but 200,000 like, albums uh, is not any sort of minor... Grand, take 200 grand. Take 200,000. I mean, you must really not be happy with it. So we'll, we'll jump right in. All songs were written by Neil. I'll note if anybody else... Uh, jumped in there with him. We're going to start out with Going Back. It's only one long verse, which Neil does at times. It's a little psychedelic instrumentally for small parts. Uh, folk, even country at times. Mm -hmm. A lot of female backing throughout this album. Yeah. This one definitely has that on there too. Not a bad way to start, would you think? This was actually one of my favorites on the record. Uh, you had that uh, string arrangement and the acoustic guitar blending quite well, especially at the end of the track. Very serene, as a lot of this record is. A lot for, of this one is real chilled, yeah. Save for a couple, uh, a couple tracks. Uh, his vocals on this reminded me a little bit of, uh, you know, some of the lighter side of Tonight's the Night. That's um, a good, yeah. And and so you know, I thought this was a, a solid opener to kind of uh, set the tone for what we have, uh, you know, sonically on this record. Yeah. Now next up is comes a time, the title track, mm -hmm. really short lyrically, mm -hmm. uh, especially for Neil. Um, more country-like on this one. What did you think of this one? Well, I'm not a huge fan when Neil goes into that I'm, country. I'm not either. Uh, we had a couple, you know, tracks on the last record we did that, uh, you know, kind of went into that. And I mean, it's still Neil. I still, you know, I, I still think it's solid. But yeah, it's like I, I prefer him either leaning into the rock or the just, you know, acoustic rock or the uh, folky, which you know, some of this has as, as well. It, it does, and the female backing mm -hmm. in there uh, on this one as well. And you know, we talked about it before we started rolling the camera, but. You know, it's his ninth studio album, plus he yeah. had a couple didn't come out, so it's hard to turn out material year by year well, by year. I mean, plus the CSNY stuff. Plus back the CSNY. In the day. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's you're not going to hit one out of the park on every single song, so we fully realize that. Now we're already up to song three. Look out for my love. She owns his love. Last verse describes him coming home to her on a plane. Vocals on this one, Trey, were more forceful, a little harder instrumentally, not a lot, but a little harder instrumentally. Not a bad track at all. I liked it a lot better than I liked Comes a Time. Yeah, I enjoyed the line, I know things are going to change, but I can't say good or bad. 
And here we had uh, those male harmony vocals, so that that helped differentiate it, it did. Uh, a little bit, and uh, you know, it had that relaxed atmosphere where you know everybody's sitting by a fire in October or something. You know, that that's kind of what uh, conjured up in my mind. I, I enjoyed this one quite a bit. It uh, was one of my favorites. Next up, the only song I knew, mm-hmm. "Lot of Love," but I didn't know Neil's version. Didn't even know it was a Neil's song. Nicolette Larson, who sang backup on most of this album, ironically doesn't on this song. Released it in 1978 as a single. Uh, Linda Ronstadt's also on this album. I should have mentioned that at the start, singing, That's right. singing backing. She says, Linda Ronstadt says, she suggested to Nicolette that she mm-hmm. should uh, record this as a single. Nicolette kind of said no, but Linda said uh, her manager, Nicolette's manager, was so thankful that he <laughs> installed a top-of-the-line sound system in her Mercedes. So that was Ooh. kind of her claim. This was weird for me to hear because I knew it from mm. I was seven years old when the single came out. I knew it from Nicolette's. It was weird to yeah, hear to hear, uh, Neil's. to hear Neil. Now, Nicolette said this. She said that Neil said that she ought to record it. The publishers of Neil Young News quoted Larson saying, I got that song off a of tape I found lying on the floor of Neil's car. I popped it in the tape player and commented on what a great song it was. Neil said, you want it? It's your. Neil recorded the version with backing from Crazy Horse. Now, of course, A Lot of Love served as the lead single for Nicolette's album. Due to re- delay in release, Comes a Time was released on the same day as Nicolette's album. The single was held off for Nicolette until uh, a week later when it was clear Young's version would not have a single release as an A-side. On this one, he's basically telling her it's going to take a lot of love for him to feel mm-hmm. secure and safe. Definitely more poppy sounding than anything else on the album. Yeah, and this isn't as rocking as one might expect when you see Crazy Horse, you know. Yeah, on, exactly. On it's very, very poppy. And I, I, But, I mean, I, it's kind of the version Nicolette did. She didn't really yeah. change it instrumentally. You might not know that version, but I it, don't, but, uh, it, uh, it reigns in my head. It's 1978. It, but, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed this for the fact that it, it is honest in the fact that not uh, all relationships are always going to be firing. Neil's always honest about that. <laughs> on uh, all cylinders. And, again, with Crazy Horse on it, it helped kind of differentiate it. And, you know, the two tracks Crazy Horse is on, uh, this one and the previous tune, are, are two of my favorites on the record. And then that takes us now to Peace of Mind. And, uh, again, th- this actually does have Nicolette on it. does. It. And uh, I-, I thought that uh, her and Neil bounced off each other well due to the subject matter of, you know, trying to find that peace of mind in a relationship. And, you know, Neil's coming in with a, with a quite an honest penned lyrics here as well. Yeah, he is. And it starts out with the female harmony right mm-hmm. away. So I thought that was a nice little touch. And yeah, very chilled as a song with this lyrics should yeah. have. Now we already go to the B-side trade. We're going to open that one up with Human Highway. It was written several years prior to the album's release, originally presented to Crosby, Stills, and Nash and Young in 1974 for a proposed studio album by the group, which it never came to be it's very country i think people are criticizing him or his music maybe what did you take out of well, these lyrics we, we got a little lord of the rings in there because yeah. he's coming down the misty mountain he is yeah i saw that we're currently we yeah. just watched lord of the rings so yeah that kind of rang true with me fresh in my mind you know a little little zeppelin throwback yeah. as well but uh yeah due to the country nature of it this this would be my least favorite track um i think i'm gonna go with you on that one but i mean at three minutes it's still listenable man um but uh you know not, not a favor that i'm gonna be you know, dying to go check out some more. Yeah, we're going to go to a more personal tune, I think, for him. Already one. They're broke up. He's heartbroken, but they have a son. It reminds him of her and what they had. I think it's pretty good. It's really chilled as well. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in here, I want Crazy Horse to come (laughs) back and rock me a little bit, but uh, not a bad tune. Yeah, I enjoyed uh, Ben Keith, who's been on a ton of Neil records. Yeah, he has. With that uh, pedal steel guitar was, uh, again, in a top form here. And we have a bit of wordplay as they, you know, quote, already won, you know, like W-O-N, the relationship, even though they're breaking away because... uh, uh, he has a, his son, so I, you know, every time he looks at the sun, you know, he kind of sees the eyes of, uh, you know, of, of the, his, you know, yeah, wife his... at, or you know, girlfriend at the time or whatever it was that uh, kind of failed. So even even though it all broke down at the end, they still won because they had a kid, kind of. So kind of a unique you know, wordplay in that, and uh, I, I dug it. Yeah, and that takes us to field of opportunity. This song is also very country. Um, I think basically his woman left him, but the field of opportunity is wide open now, so he can kind of, 
you know, he's trying to look at the mm-hmm. bright side of things, even though he's not feeling real good about being wet. Oh, definitely. I don't have uh, too much more to add, but hey, if you you are in the field of opportunity, man, it, I, I like that. You got to kind of look on the positive. You, you have like, to, man. Otherwise, you get caught up in the negative. You can you can stay on it for a little bit, but then you got to move on. I think Neil does yeah. that in his music. He he varies between this really sucks to all right, this could get better. <laughs> That's going to take us to Motorcycle Mama, where Ooh. Nicolette Larson <laughs> pops back up and actually does. Uh, she shares lead vocal with mm-hmm. him, which is rare on a Neil album. Um, a lot of sexual innuendos in this Dude, one. There were, I man. mean, it's loaded with it. And, you know, Neil usually doesn't uh, go into that territory. No. But, uh, I kind of liked it because, you know, we don't hear, hear that. Uh, it's a different thing for him. Bad boy side of Neil, uh, so to speak. So that's going to bring us to our final track. The only one that Neil didn't write, Four Strong Winds. It was written by Ian Tyson and recorded by Canadian folk rock duo Ian and Sylvia. Tyson noted he composed it in about 20 minutes in 1961. It's a significant composition of the early 60s folk revival. The song is a melancholy reflection on a failing romantic relationship. It has a clear Canadian context and subtext. We got Nicolette Larson on here. It's also on the band's The Last Waltz. Basically, she has left him, but he really wishes she would change her mind. Well, and what I enjoy about uh, whenever artists choose covers is when it really fits with the record. It's perfect. And it's actually my favorite track. It's a spoiler for yeah, what's coming next. And like, uh, you know, if you told me Neil wrote this, I would 100% yeah, believe you. I so would have too. It, it fit great. And, um, you know, I, I just think... Uh, fits with the, kind of that theme of the relationships going in there. You know, I, I enjoyed what well, one of our parting lines. If the good times are all gone, then I'm bound for moving on. I'll look for you if I'm ever back this way. A bit of a thematic statement, I think, for uh, this record as a whole, which uh, will take us now to our favorite tracks. I got Going Back and uh, Look Out for My Love. I got the last song, Four Strong Winds and Going Back. Mm. That's going to bring us to our overall score. We've done a lot of these yeah. on Neil. Um, and, and as I mentioned partway through the review after the second song, you know, it's tough to bring consistency time mm-hmm. and time again. I still like it. It's still Neil. Um, but for mm-hmm. me, this might be his weakest album that I've come mm-hmm. across. Um, so in that, I'm going to be at a 575, which I always got to say yeah. this when I give a grade because everyone will five, but a five is average, right? Mm-hmm. So a 575, it's still Neil. I'll still yeah. listen to a few of these tracks. None of it's bad because no. it is Neil. If you like Neil, you're going to understand, you know. That, that the lyricism is still yeah. spot on. It's just, it, it doesn't really uh, do it for me like some mm-hmm. of his other albums. Some of his other albums are my some of my favorite albums that I've, that I've heard. Yeah, so. exactly. I'm, I'm kind of in that same ballpark. I'm a little higher than you. I'm, I'm going a 6'5 yeah. on this record. Um, it, it's still, it, it, Neil's so great at conveying emotions. Yeah, he is. Uh, through not only the lyricism, but also the music and the atmosphere that he sets with that. And I think this record had it, uh, save for the... You know, a couple country-inspired tunes sure. that I could have gone without. But some uh, of you may love that. I yeah, mean, If you exactly. like that era of country music, you're going to love that. So I see that. Um, you know, save for those two, I thought everything here was solid to, uh, you know, a couple tracks were pretty good. Yeah. None of these tracks are going to make, a, you know, favorite Neil Young, no. you know, playlist. But that's, that's a heck of a playlist to make. Yeah, but still, I you know, I, I thought it was solid for what it was. Didn't overstay its welcome, you no. know, uh, not even a 40-minute yeah. record, you know, I think around 36, 37 minutes. Uh, so... If you're a Neil fan and haven't heard this, give it a spin, man. Sure. Uh, you know, there's still some tunes and um, you know sounds that, and lyrics that I think you're gonna you're gonna enjoy, even if it's not you know gonna be top tier Neil. Right. But, uh, you can't expect that to always be the case, man. But let us know. Maybe you love this record. Maybe it's one of your top Neil records. Let us know what you think of it down below. Your favorite tracks are also welcome. Shout out as always, Dad, for the research. I always enjoy it with Neil. Always, always interesting backstories with oh, my man, well, Uncle the, Neil. The two hundred thousand LPs was a that was worth the price of admission. That's man. right. And uh, again, shout out to Carl. Um, Thank you, gonna, Carl. We got uh, a couple more Neil, uh, books. and then we got a nice top ten list that Carl that's put together. Right. That's fantastic. Uh, so be sure to sub so you don't miss out on that. And uh, as we finish off twenty twenty, man. So until next time, y'all. Thanks for watching. Happy listening, and we will see you.